Checking, checking. Come gather around people wherever you roam And admit that the waters around you have groaned And accept it that soon you'll be drenched to the bone If your time to you is worth saving Then you better start swimming or you'll sink like a stone For the times they are a-changing Some writers and critics who prophesy with your pen 
And keep your eyes wide, the chance won't come again And don't speak too soon for the wheel still in spin There's no telling who that it's naming For the loser now will be later to win For the times, they are a-changing Senators, congressmen, please heed the call Don't stand in the doorway, don't block the hall For he that gets hurt will be he who has stalled There's a battle outside and it's raging It'll soon shake your windows and rattle your walls For the time, they are a-changing Come mothers and fathers throughout the land And don't criticize what you can't understand Your sons and your daughters are beyond your command Your old road is rapidly aging Please don't get out of the new one if you can't lend a hand For the times, they are a-changing The line it is drawn, the curse it is cast The slow one now will be later the fast As the present now will later be past The order is rapidly fading The first one now will be later the last For the times, they are a-changing are changing. Those of you who get the letter in the website and all that, we had changes here at the church this week. And I noticed that some of you have decided to throw these away. Yeah. Now, here, here's the thing. I want you all to realize that if you're vaccinated, you're free to take these off. But there's some that are uncomfortable with that. You are free to wear your mask. If you're unvaccinated, we would ask that you wear your mask. There are others with other health conditions. Wear your mask. That's fine. We don't judge. But the times are a-changing. We're glad you're here today with us at St. John's. One thing that's changed, instead of the books on the tables that you guys signed when you came in, we gave you a card today when you walked in. Go ahead and just sign the card. Drop it in the basket uh, after you've completed it. And that's how we're taking attendance right now. So no pre-registration, none of that. So for everybody out there in the web, in the web world that are watching, waiting to come in, we would welcome you back. We are continuing the live stream, so if you can't make it some particular Sunday because you're not feeling well or something, you can still watch us. We're actually on three channels now, at least temporarily. We're on Facebook, YouTube, and the church's website. So you can find us. Everybody can find us. So we're glad you're here today. So with that, we're going to start our worship service. Pray with me today. Lord, no matter what happens in this world, you are with us. Whether it be a pandemic, whether it be financial troubles, whether it be disease or, or any number of things, war, there are all kinds of trials and tribulations that come before us as your children. And yet, if we'll only remember that you are always with us, you will get us through all those times. Let us use this worship service today to come together in you and remember that this community that worships you, we are a family. Be with us today and help us to be inspired so that we can share your love to the world, to those who do not know you. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Let us stand. Amen. Clap your hands if you'd like. Say
that you poured out so freely from above. Lifting gratitude and praise for compassion so amazing. Lord, we come to give you thanks for all you've done. Because of your love, we're forgiven. Because of your love, our hearts are clean. We lift you up with songs of freedom. Forever we're changed because of your love. Say yeah. of your love we say of your love our hearts are clean we lift you up with songs of freedom forever we're changed because of your love all right have a seat so as we come to our time of offering to keep with the theme of times are a-changing, we've actually changed our bookkeeping system here at the church. And so the link that we used before to do offering, Shelby, we're not using. We're using push pay now. And so the link is up here on the screen. It'll be out on the web for you. If you click on it in the website, it is a different address. So you will notice that. Those of you that are here, you're free to bring your offering up here to the baskets during this time of offertory music that Gil shares with us. Let us bow as we pray for our offering today. Lord, you've given us so much, and all we can do is give a little bit back to you, for you will multiply it and make it do great things. Take these gifts today that we give, whether they be a check or cash or an online donation, and use them to do your will, not ours to do your ministry throughout this world. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. One, two, three. You bless the poor in spirit, for heaven is their home. You bless the merciful, to them your mercy will be shown. Those who work for peace are children of the Lord. You heal the broken heart and bless the ones who mourn. As your kingdom comes, we are will become yours. As your kingdom comes, our will become yours. You bless the people. 
pure in heart, for they will see your face. Your spirit will not bless a heart that's filled with hate. So teach us to forgive and teach us not to judge. Help us turn our cheek and bless our enemies with love. As your kingdom comes, may our will become yours. As your kingdom comes, may our will become yours. We will mend the broken. We will heal the lame. God, renew our nation in and through the power of Jesus' name. You oppose the proud. You embrace the weak. You will raise your humble servant. It's your kingdom we will see. Oh. you bow your heads and pray with me. Get centered and get comfortable in your chair, whether you're in this space or online. Lord, we thank you that the times are changing. Glory be to God for the start of summer, for a clear blue skies and the hot wind in our faces, for the long days and the short nights, for crickets chirping lightning bugs blinking, for people stepping out with sandaled feet, for sunscreen, for sun hats and water pistols. Glory be to God for the bright gardens growing, for yuccas in bloom, for the smell of fresh cut grass, for the sound of swamp coolers humming, for the shade of leafy trees, for the taste of lemonade and sun tea. Glory be to God, especially for the start of this summer, for children playing in our parks again with delighted squeals, for neighbors gathering again for garage sales and street parties, for amusement parks reopening and friends gathering around at picnics. Lord, we give you thanks for all that is good as we begin our summer. Lord, we praise you for all these small blessings we witness and take for granted this season. We pray for the eyes to see, ears to hear, and souls that are in tune to the glory of your providence all around us. That we, your people, may be a ready and faithful witness to your goodness and grace, we pray. Help us to be empathetic to those who suffer, reassuring to those that doubt, hopeful for those who are sick, steady with those who struggle, and patient and present with everyone you bring our way that we can be your faithful church at all times, in all times, and for all time, as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's reading is from the 11th chapter of the book of Acts of the church of An in Antioch. Now those who were scattered because of the persecution that took place over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, and they spoke the word to no one except Jews. But among them were some men of Cyprus and Cyrene who, on coming to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, also proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number became believers and turned to the Lord. News of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for an entire year they met with the church and taught a great many people, and it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It is great to be with you again and to actually see your smiling faces and not only the twinkle of your eye. So it is good to be here. I'm very grateful for the time I had in the month of May, a couple weeks of vacation, a week of spiritual renewal, and then I'm grateful to SPRC for granting me a bonus week. So Doug and I had a great time. We went to Colorado. We saw our kids. I saw my brother and sister who I hadn't seen in a year and a half, all of my nieces and nephews and great nieces. Uh, Doug and I went to Wichita for a high school graduation of our granddaughter. Our daughter, Lindsay, came here, and for the first Mother's Day in 12 years, I had both of my kids together. And Jay and Regina took us up in a hot air balloon ride on Mother's Day. So it was wonderful and a great month, and I am very grateful for this time. Today, we will be celebrating the table of the Lord, but a little differently. So at the end of the sermon, we are going to go into the prayer of confession. I'm going to consecrate the elements. And then as you depart today, Jared will be at this door with a basket of cups, the individual cups. Gina will be at this door. And as you depart, you are invited to take a cup with you. And then on your own, in the parking lot or at home, in a park somewhere, you may participate in receiving receiving the bread and the cup today. So friends, will you please pray with me? God, source of all light, by your word you give light to the soul. Pour out on us the spirit of wisdom and understanding through the scriptures that our hearts and minds may be open to know your truth and your way. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. What is the meaning of a name? And how do we live into that name? Well, I was doing some packing this week in my office. I ran across a coffee cup that had been gifted to me some time back, and it has my name on the front and the meaning on the back. The front says, Pamela. On the back it says, all sweetness and a sweet song of harmony and joy. If you believe that meaning of my name and who I am, then I have some swampland in East New Mexico that I'll sell you. 
I remember when my children were going to be born, I looked through all of the baby name books to select just the perfect name for them. For my son, Sean, I, I wanted a not, name that was a strong and meaningful, so I selected Sean, S-E-A-N, spelled the Irish way, and the meaning of Sean is gift of God. I did think that my firstborn was truly a gift from God, as all babies are. And I also felt that there was some strength in this meaning of his name that I hoped would carry him through his life. When my daughter was born, Lindsay is her name, and I named her after her aunt Linda, and the middle name of my brother Dennis, which is Lynn, L-Y-N-N, so I had to be a little bit different, and I spelled Lindsay L-Y-N-D-S-A-Y. Now, the meaning of Lindsay is peaceful, kind, and gracious. It also means pretty one. And I thought that that fit my born, newborn daughter perfectly. And through these 30 plus years, I have seen the evidence that both Sean and Lindsay have uh, grown into the, their, the meaning of their names in quite a gracious way. I'm still working on the meaning of my name, to tell you the truth. <laughs> While the meaning of our given names is important, we also have another name, the name of Christian. What does it mean to have and bear the name of Christian? Luke, the author of the book of the Acts of the Apostles, he tells us that the early believers of the resurrected Jesus were the first given that name, Christian, and it happened in Antioch. Now, Antioch is uh, one of the, the major cities in the Roman Empire alongside Rome and Alexandria. It is in Antioch that um, uh, Paul made his, and launched his three missionary journeys. It is Antioch, where the first large Gentile community of believers began to gather. And it is in this place, Antioch, where we first distinguish these Christian, these believers in the risen Lord, aside from the Jewish community. Up to this point, the Jewish followers have been designated with various names, apostles, saints, disciples, believers, followers of the way, brothers, and sisters. The term Christian in the Greek means one belonging to Christ. Now it's uncertain if the early church gave themselves that name, Christian, or if it was used by others and maybe even in a derogatory, mocking way. Oh, you know those people, those who say they belong to this man who was raised from the dead. So which way, we don't know, but whatever the, the origin, this term stuck. This name, Christian, became prevalent. In Acts 26, we hear again about Christian, and it only happens two more times in the New Testament. In Acts 26, King Herod Agrippa II asked the Apostle Paul, do you think in such a short time you can persuade me to be a Christian? This statement implies that the name Christian has become widely known, and it's applied to this group of followers of Jesus. The other example is in the first letter of Peter concerning the suffering that Christians are enduring. If you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name, the name Christian, one who belongs to Christ. What does it mean to be a Christian, to claim that name? And how and what does it mean to live that name out in our world in such a way that everyone will know that we belong to Christ? Today we begin a three-part sermon series. This will go over the next three weeks, and they happen to be my final three weeks among you. This sermon series is called The Three Simple Rules. And each week, over the next three weeks, we will look um, and delve into one rule each week. Those rules are do no harm, do good, 
and stay in love with God. These rules are part of our Wesleyan tradition as United Methodists. John Wesley gave us a precise understanding of how we are to believe and act if we are named Christian. These simple rules, these practices, these instructions of being a Christian person have been outlined in our book of discipline and these general rules of the United Societies haven't been changed since 1808. Every four years we have a new book of discipline after general conference and these words stay firm. They are about us and who we are and how we live as Christian people in the world. These three rules provide guidance to the groups um, that Wesley and his uh, brother John, or John and his brother Charles, started to gather together, groups that held one accountable for living a Christian life. And the Book of Discipline says, for seeking the power of godliness. Now, while it's interesting to look at the original language that is part of the general rules of the United Societies in our Book of Discipline, Bishop Reuben Job wrote a book in 2007, and he did other versions of it and videos that went along in his, his own um, words. He passed away in 2015, I believe it was. But the little book is called The Three Simple Rules, A Wesleyan Way of Living. And I'll be using this book as a resource over the next three weeks, and you will hear quotes from this little book of Bishop Reuben Job. These simple rules give us a way of living that marks our life together as a church and our lives as individuals named who? Christians. With the help of God, with Christ at our center, and with our willingness. Living out these rules can change us and thus change our world. This week we are going to start with the simple rule, do no harm. Do no harm. When I was in licensing school many years ago as part of the process of becoming a licensed local pastor, and by the way, our Jared has just finished his licensing school. Way to go, Jared. We are so proud of your accomplishment. Um, and part of this licensing school, um, I have to say that an unfortunate and, yes, harmful thing happened. Each of the students had to preach a sermon for the class. This was my very first public sermon. And after we preached our sermon, then we would go back to the classroom and teachers would evaluate and critique us first and then students in the class would also be a part of that critique. So I had given my sermon in the chapel at Iliff School of Theology in Denver. I thought things went pretty well, but to tell you the truth, I can't remember a thing about that sermon. I don't remember the scriptural text. I don't remember the theme. I don't remember stories that I might have shared or liked life applicable uh, situations that I may have woven into that sermon. Don't remember a thing except I do remember what happened afterward. So we left the chapel, we went back into the classroom, and the very first teacher who critiqued my sermon said to me, the first words out of her mouth, I loved everything you had to say, I just couldn't stand to look at you. Can you believe it? I can't stand to look at you. And she went on to say, you smile too much. You laugh too much. Those words pierced my heart. They went straight to the core of my being. Those harmful words stayed with me for years. In fact, for over a decade as I grew into being a pastor. And I might say a pretty good pastor at that. <laughs> but every once in a while, I would hear this echo in my memory box. You remember what she said. You remember she can't stand to look at you. 
harmful words or actions can stay with us for a very long time, I bet not one of us can't say, it hasn't happened to me. It has happened. It has happened to us, and we probably have been part of perhaps the inflicting of those harmful words or those actions. But if we keep this simple rule to do no harm, if we keep that in our minds and our hearts, we can often refrain from hurtful words or actions that might be harmful to others. To do no harm is given its definition in the Book of Discipline as avoiding evil of every kind. This will be important to us as we delve into this simple rule to do no harm a little more today. Here are some other things to consider about do no harm. To do no harm means that we agree to disagree. We do that often, don't we? But we do it with great respect for one another. Bishop Job says, when we agree that we will not harm those whom we disagree, conversation, dialogue, and discovery of new insight become possible. When we agree to do no harm, we go about resolving disagreements in a civil manner. When we aim for our actions and our words to be thoughtful and considerate, when we agree to do no harm, the climate of conflict changes. It takes a shift. We see each other with new eyes. We see the evidence of grace-filled presence and debate. When we speak disparagingly, when we diminish others, when we engage in gossip, when we manipulate facts and truths, we are risking doing harm. Engaging in doing no harm means that we seek a common good. We can find a common ground when we put our defenses aside, our biases, our prejudice, our preferences, and we seek to be in harmony with one another and with the world. Bishop Job puts it this way, as we disarm harm, we move into new possibilities of community. As we share a common faith, as we we feast at a common table as we realize we are all God's children receiving an equal measure of God's unlimited love and grace. In doing no harm, we find that good and solid place to stand where together we can seek the way forward in faithfulness to God. When we are determined to do no harm, we lose our fear of one another that is so good, we have to hear it again. When we are determined to do no harm, we lose our fear of one another. Thank you, Bishop Job, for those words. To do no harm requires a radical trust in God's presence, strength, wisdom, forgiveness, guidance, always seeking to recognize the face of grace in situations and in one another. If we take this rule seriously to do no harm and we examine the way we live and we practice our faith as Christians, then the world begins to look different. And we see each other in a different light. Bishop Job says, to do no harm is a proactive response to all that is evil, all that is damaging and destructive to humankind and God's good creation, and therefore ultimately destructive to us. To adopt this simple rule as our own is a giant step toward transforming the world in which we live. This week marked the 100th anniversary of the massacre of the black community of Tulsa, Oklahoma. The Greenwood District, the Black Wall Street as it was commonly called, as it was decimated by a white mob. Over 300 residents of Greenwood were killed and buried in unmarked mass graves. Many more were injured and others were arrested for committing apparently no crime except for living in that 
neighborhood or community and for being black. Thousands were left homeless as their neighborhoods, homes, businesses were ransacked and burned to the ground. And perhaps worse than all, this event was mostly forgotten or pushed aside or left out of the history books completely. Many Oklahomans did not even know of this event, and I'm sure I'm not alone when I say I never heard of this until about a year ago. Well, last Friday, in our United Methodist news source, a pastoral letter regarding the Tulsa race massacre was written by one of our bishops, Bishop Jimmy Nunn, the Bishop of the Oklahoma and the Oklahoma Missionary Conferences. Um, in fact, I uh, worked and ministered alongside Jimmy Nunn in the Northwest Texas Conference before he was elected a bishop, and he is a wonderful, wonderful individual. In his pastoral letter, he mentioned that during the time of the massacre a hundred years ago, there were two branches of Methodism in Tulsa, the Methodist Episcopal Church and the Methodist Episcopal Church South, which would eventually become part of the United Methodist Church. And there were other branches of Methodism active in the Tulsa community, including an AME church, the Vernon African Methodist Episcopal Church, which was the only edifice to survive the massacre in the Greenwood District. And during the massacre and the days that followed, both of the downtown Methodist churches were utilized as makeshift hospitals, taking care of the injured. At the same time this good was being done to take care of the injured, church leaders and pastors of the Methodist and Methodist-affiliated churches preached sermons blaming the victims of the massacre for inciting it. And after a Methodist Episcopal Church South moved to a new location in Tulsa and the former building was sold, the site became the corporate front of the Ku Klux Klan. Bishop Nunn says in his pastoral letter, it is important that we recognize our own explicit and implicit actions in perpetrating and responding to this horrific event. And then he called us, us United Methodists, us who take on the name of Christian, those who belong to Christ, to join together in praying the historic prayer of confession that we use when we come to the table of the Lord. Friends, we as Christians, as ones who belong to Christ, and we as the church, we have to accept some of the responsibility for doing harm whenever and wherever that harm takes place. And even if we have not been directly involved with these situations, even if they have happened in past history, even if they happen today or they happen in the future, as those named Christian, we show the way. We show the way of love. We guide and we teach, we nurture, we encourage, we strengthen, we walk alongside others. We show another way. And we put do no harm seriously to practice as Christian people, as we take a stance against any harmful acts, any harmful words, we will stand up and we will speak out when any human or group is being targeted by hate or violence, when any harm is being inflicted. We will be the church and Christian people that we are called to be, and we will do it with great love. And it is in that great love that was exampled through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that today we come to the table with our hearts, our hearts aligned with doing no harm as those named Christian and with our hearts lifted before God 
with our prayers of confession for any harm that has been done. So friends, we come now. We will see the prayer of confession up on the screen and on the screen at home. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now each in our own way, we have a few silent moments to confess any harm that we have inflicted on others and to offer forgiveness to the harm that has come to us. Friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And it is on this day that we remember a night when Jesus gathered his disciples together. It's been such a long time, hasn't it? <laughs> a long time since we have been able to come together and come to this table. If you want to shed some tears with me, go right ahead. We remember that night when Jesus said to his friends, this bread represents my body broken for you. Whenever you take this bread and you eat it, do so in my remembrance. Likewise, after the meal, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, O God. And he said to his disciples, this cup represents my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin now and forevermore. And every time you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and in our homes and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forevermore. Amen. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light 
And darkness tries to hide It trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice. Can you lift your hands and say, How great is our God? Sing with me, How great is our God? And all will see how great, how great is our God. And time is in his hands Beginning and the end Beginning and the end The Godhead three in one Father, Spirit, Son Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. Everybody say, How great is our God? Sing with me, How great is our God? And all will see how great, how great is our God. Oh, name above all names, worthy of all praise, and my heart will sing how great is our God. One more time, name above all names. Oh. Say how great, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Everybody say, how great. How great is our God. How great, how great is our God. How great, how great is our God. My soul, my Savior God, to Thee. Can you lift your hands and say this? How great Thou art. If you'd like to stand, I invite you to stand. How great Thou art. Then sings to thee oh how great thou art how great thou art oh how great thou art seated. 
So as we close our worship today, we have a couple of announcements. First off, Family Promise had their Sweet Jazz fundraiser, and someone has decided to donate dollar for dollar up to $43,000 to match our donations. And so if you feel led to donate to Family Promise, go to their website that's up on the screen here, or you can mail the check to their office on San Pedro, and for every dollar you give, this person will add double it, essentially. So I hope you'll do that. And uh, the next announcement is Barbara Stanfield, who's the wife of Clyde Stanfield, one of our retired preachers in church. Barbara is our preschool director. Our, not our preschool director. She is the chairperson of the preschool committee team. And so she has an announcement today. So Barbara, if you'll come over and make that announcement, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Lynn. And no, I am not the director. <laughs> Been there, done that. Well, I am Barbara Stanfield and chairman of the preschool ministry team. And you may know that the preschool has been closed since March of 2020. However, the preschool ministry team has continued to work regularly and hard. And I am very happy to announce to you that the preschool will be opening on August 9th of this year. And I am even more excited. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I am even more excited to introduce the new preschool director. And I have asked Kathy Lubold, our new preschool director, to tell you a little bit about herself. I want you to hear her and see, meet her. So Kathy, welcome and speak. And take off your hands okay. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It is so wonderful to be here. I apologize. I was brought to tears at that last song, so thank you. Um, thank you for having me. I am very, very excited to be here and part of your ministry to, um, to early childhood, and I, uh, it's a passion of mine for over 30 years. Um, I have five children of my own, my husband and I, uh, and 12 grandchildren. Our 12th will be born well, the due date's next week, so uh, prayers for that. Um, my husband and I are, uh, we've been married for 38 years. We are uh, military brats. We met in Italy. Sounds very romantic. Um, and uh, we uh, were high school sweethearts. My dad was in the Navy and stationed in uh, Brindisi, Italy, and my husband's dad was in the Air Force. And uh, we were lucky enough to meet each other, and we've been together ever since. He hadn't gotten rid of me yet. <laughs> um, I am really excited to be here. I thank you for this opportunity um, to, uh, to grow with the preschool, and I can't wait to open the doors. We have a tour on Monday afternoon, our first door open to our first customer. So um, I look forward to this year and sharing my journey with all of you. Thank you. Yes, what a milestone to be opening the Preschool Plus program again and to have Kathy in our presence. And I'm going to ask Jared and Gina to come on up and get our baskets of elements. And Jared will be at one door and Gina will be at the other. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jared. Hand sanitizer. They will deliver the cup to you. All right, so that way we'll have one pair of sanitized hands in the basket rather than a bunch of them. And those who are um, participating by live stream this morning, we are so glad you have been with us. And yes, please get your bread and cup or a flour tortilla and also participate in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Friends, would you please stand for the benediction? And now may God go before you to show you the way of living in the world as a Christian, one who has the name Christian, doing no harm. May God go beside us, befriending us, behind us, encouraging us, above us, watching over us, and within us, granting us great peace, hope, love, and joy. In the name of, the, of God, the Creator, Jesus the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, all God's people say, Amen.
Clap your hands with the... With the road I lift your name on high Lord, I love to sing your praises so glad you're in my life I'm so glad you came to save us You came from heaven to earth To show the way From the earth to the cross My death to pay From the cross to the grave From the grave to the sky Lord, I lift your name on high. Let me hear you say, Tu nombre levantaré. <laughs> me deleito en adorarte. Come on, come on. Te agradezco que en mi vida estés. Que vinieras a salvar. You sound great. Dejaste el trono para Mostrarnos la luz de tu trono a la cruz Mi deuda a pagar de la cruz a morir De la muerte a tu trono tu nombre levantaré You came from heaven to earth to show the way From the earth to the cross my dead to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh, oh, oh. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. God bless. Thank you for being with us. Have a great day. Have a great weekend.